So this problem is calculating the flux of V through this surface. Um, and it's a multi-step process. Uh, so part A is to find a convenient closing surface, M2, such that um, M is the union of M1 and M2, where this is M1. So find a convenient closing surface M2 uh, such that M is a CCPR surface with a standard outward pointing orientation. So since our surface M1 is a right circular cylinder centered around the Z axis with radius five uh, between Z equal to negative seven and seven, uh, the closing surface M2, it should be clear, um, is going to be a union of two surfaces. Um, M2 top, where this top part is a uh, disk uh, of radius 5 at z equal to 7, and M2 bottom, which is also a disk of radius 5, but it's at z equal to negative 7. And of course, uh, this one's going to be oriented upwards, and this one's going to be oriented downwards. Uh, okay, so we've done step one or part A. Part B was to calculate the flux of V through M2 uh, using the definition of flux. So <clears throat> we're going to start with uh, the flux through M2 top. And let's see here. We have the integral from of Now, so what we can do here is, so V, well first off, let's talk about uh, the normal vector. Normal vector is going to be pointing straight up since this disk is perpendicular to the Z axis. So we're going to have 0, 0, 1. And we're going to dot that with, uh, we don't care about the first two components. And the last one is Z. Uh, however, since this is a disk for z equal to 7, we can just plug in 7. And now, the last part, this, we usually use ds since it's a surface. However, we could use da since this is a flat uh, disk uh, with a constant z. So there's no reason that we can't just put in da there. Uh, this simplifies, oh, this is M2 top, to uh, 7. We can pull that 7 out. And this just becomes uh, the area integral of the disk of radius 5, which we should all know is just pi times the radius squared. which comes out to 175 pi. So I'm just going to put this up here. And then we can start doing the flux through M2 bottom. OK, so now same thing. We have a disk of radius 5, except now it's at z equal to negative 7. Uh, and also, since it's or this surface is oriented outwards, we're going to have a normal vector pointed um, in the negative z direction. So 0, 0, negative 1. And this is dotted with, uh, don't care about the first two again, and then z. And in this case, z is negative 7. So we can just plug that right in. It's constant at negative 7. And same thing, we can just put da there. Negative uh, 7 times negative 1 is, again, 7. So we have 7 times the area of this disk, this bottom disk, which is the same thing. It's pi times the radius squared 
And so we get another 175 pi. Therefore, the flux of um, V through the surface M2 is equal to the sum of M2's parts, the flux of V through the parts of M2. So we can just add these together and we get 350 pi for the flux of V through M2. And we've done part B, and now we have to do the last really computational step of part C, which is calculate the flux of V through M using the divergence theorem, where M is this closed surface with these two disks. So what we're going to do is use the divergence theorem. And this, since it's a closed surface, is also equal to the triple integral over the solid of the gradient dotted with the vector. Yeah. OK. And so now we need to calculate this. So we have. So d dx of negative y plus d dy of x plus, or these are partials, obviously, partial over partial z of z. And so this is 0, this is 0, this is 1. So we just get <coughs> 1, which means that we are just going to be calculating the volume of this cylinder, since we're going to have the triple integral with the integrand of 1. Uh, and we should all be able to figure this out. Um, it's just going to be the height, which is 14. 14 times the area of the disk at the bottom, which as we saw before is pi times 5 squared. And this is equal to 350 pi. And finally for part D, we are asked to calculate uh, the flux through M1 with um, our results for the flux through M and the flux through M2. Um, and since M is the union of, so we have M is the union of M1 and M2, the flux through M1 is going to be the flux of M minus the flux of M2. So we have 350 pi for the flux of M, we're going to subtract the flux of V through M2, which is 350 pi. And so the result is 0. And this means that the flux of uh, v through m1 is equal to 0. And that is all of this problem.